Traditionally, schools are a place meant for learning, but what would happen if secretly behind the scenes a fight club was started in between the students? Well, that is the story we'll be discussing today. Since its release in 1999, David Fincher's Fight Club has become ingrained within pop culture. In it, the protagonist organizes the titular brawls as an escape from his bland, monotonous life. Ignoring its thematic relevance, because of the film's success, many real-world stories have surfaced of copycats inspired by the premise. While these are typically formed by adults, there have been a handful of instances in which children as young as 14 have found themselves in the brutal ritual. And perhaps even more disturbingly, some were goaded into it by the very same adults who have been entrusted with the responsibility of their well-being. Our story for today takes place at Monfield High School in the small state of Connecticut. In the fall of 2017, a man named Ryan Fish was employed to work as a substitute teacher. Being just 22 years of age, Ryan was rather young for the gig. Because of this, when assigned a class of freshmen that semester, he struggled to not view Monfield as a social environment, and made it his goal to be considered the cool teacher. Mr. Fish began to advertise his room as the quote-unquote kickback class, where for the last 10 minutes he'd allow for them to do whatever they wanted. He went so far as to invite students from other lessons to leave early in order to visit. While this caused him to earn a positive reputation amongst teens, he was enabling some rather questionable behavior. For example, his whiteboard was often filled with obscene images, such as graphic depictions of other teachers giving him oral. Ryan also attempted to bond over stories of smoking marijuana and other drugs. Very little learning seemed to be done, as students considered him a mentor in all ways but mathematics. He even shared his personal Snapchat to them, as a gesture of friendship. In an interview, Ryan would describe this teaching style as an attempt to be the teacher that the kids could come to actually express themselves and work through their issues. Despite this clear misconduct, for the first month of the semester, the district turned a blind eye, with the substitute's kickback class continuing well into October. However, in the middle of that month, the enabling escalated to the point that his behavior could no longer be ignored. Around that time, a multiple cell phone videos began to surface of children slapboxing each other in his room to the point of blood and vomit. One graphically showed a 16-year-old beaten so severely that they began dry heaving over a desk. Another left a student with a bloody lip before class. And it's not as if Mr. Fish was unaware of these altercations occurring. He was actively involved, at times even seen in the footage encouraging it. For example, after a boy threw up, Ryan shockingly attempted to initiate a second round, only being stopped due to the bell ringing shortly thereafter, though much of the footage is no longer available online anymore. Usually he played the role of referee, outstretching his arms and thrusting them down, and cueing matches on the count of three. Afterwards, the educator would walk back to his desk, observing the juvenile combatants as a smile grew on his face. As word of Montville's fight club spread across the campus, crowds began to form as kids cheered on the brawls. As a result, its existence was soon made apparent to the rest of the staff with parents and witnesses emailing their concerns. On October 10th, the high school's assistant principal, Tatiana Pattern, had Mr. Fish escorted by security to her office. When confronted, he attempted to defend himself, stating that boys will be boys, and that he grew up in the countryside where boys do stuff like that. To his shock, she remained unconvinced by this line of reasoning, and the man was fired that same day. Despite now being made aware of the situation, administrators didn't report it to authorities. They deemed it as not a law enforcement matter, and with Ryan's expulsion, higher-ups officially considered the ordeal resolved. Months later in December, however, one student would decide to break the first rule of high school fight club, causing this case to return to the spotlight. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. 
While most of us don't like to think about it, a majority of men will start losing their hair at some point in their lives if they don't do anything about it. This is where Keeps comes into the picture. The great thing is there are clinically proven treatments out there that will help with this problem. And with Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right treatment plan for you. Then the products will be shipped directly to your door every three months. And if there's ever a problem, your Keeps doctor is available 24-7 to answer questions. I really do respect this company for coming out here and informing men that there is something they can do about their hair loss. Just remember that prevention is key, and the faster you get on these FDA-approved medications, the more hair you can save. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com gfm or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com gfm. After the substitute's dismissal, the student's wounds began to heal as life went back to normal. Because of this, school staff assumed that the story was over and that their negligence of allowing a fight club to occur on their watch would remain concealed. Things all changed though on December 14th, 2017, when one of the boys who participated in the fight spoke to a social worker from Connecticut's Department of Children and Families. The victim was visibly shaken and confessed that he'd been that way ever since getting beaten up at school. The woman examined him and noticed real and identifiable signs of trauma. As a result, the 15-year-old was taken to the hospital for a mental health evaluation, and the alleged crime was described to law enforcement. Police arrived at Monfil High the very next day. They were met by the school's assistant principal, who finally informed them of what had occurred months prior. After disclosing Ryan's involvement in the high school fight club, law enforcement requested that all materials pertaining to the altercation be forwarded. Initially, the staff complied, creating a thumb drive with relevant videos on it, but then they realized that legally nothing had to be turned over without a search warrant. Thankfully, authorities acquired that approval quickly, and were shocked to discover six different videos of teens as young as 14 swinging full force at each other's heads with open open-handed strikes. Now with clear leads as to the participants, they began reaching out to each of the victims seen in the footage. In these chats, one said that they didn't want to fight at all, having been hit first with no prior warning. It wasn't long before they acquired enough evidence to interrogate Ryan on his involvement. The self-described kickback class teacher was first interviewed on January 3rd, 2018 at the local police department. Mr. Fish was initially only asked about the fight that resulted in a student vomiting. He attempted to defend himself, excusing it as horseplay. He then claimed that the fights began without his knowledge while out in the hall, and he didn't have the de-escalation skills necessary to stop it. When questioned further, he indicated it was the only fight that occurred, though quickly backtracked and admitted to remembering another when investigators described a second incident. Caught off guard, he told them that he would let them be teenagers and get their energy out, then admitted to egging them on, before subsequently requesting an attorney and ending the interview. Six days later, police would return to his home acting on a search warrant. Mr. Fish surprisingly requested a second interview. This time, the disgraced substitute teacher seemed to give a more honest recollection, fully acknowledging it had gone too far. He then reasoned that because he was so close to the student's age, he adopted the wrong mindsets, revealing his motivations by stating, The truth is, I'm an idiot and wanted to befriend them. I'm immature. On April 12th, 2018, Ryan Fish was arrested on two counts of risking injury to children, as well as four of reckless endangerment. A week later, three Monfil High administrators were also arrested, on account of failing to report the incidents. This included the aforementioned Tatiana Pattern, as well as Principal Jeffrey Theodos and Superintendent Brian Levescu. Ryan's trial will conclude six months later. Though prosecutors referred to the allegations as serious, they were hesitant to sentence him harshly due to his age and apparent need for treatment. On October 24th, Mr. Fish was granted an accelerated pretrial rehabilitation program that if completed would lead to the criminal charges against him being dropped. As a result, he was released on probation in a bazaar and to the children that were brutalized under his watch, upsetting slap on the wrist. 
That same month, the school superintendent resigned from the district, accepting a severance package worth over $230,000. All charges against him were dropped. The principal opted to retire ahead of schedule, causing the case against him to also be dropped. Not wanting to leave the field of education, assistant principal Pattern refused to resign, and remained in court until 2019, when the judge finally granted her an accelerated rehabilitation program as well. Proceeding the fallout, it appears that Ryan Fish left the field of education, and that is probably for the best. So with that, I think I'll end the video here. And until next time, thanks for watching.